Hello, and welcome to the course trailer for Anthropology 1033, the Archaeology of Inequality. I'm talking with the course's instructor, Dr. Jess Beck. Jess, could you please tell us what inspired you to offer this course? I think a kind of quick and off the cuff answer would be because billionaires are going to space now, um, which is a little bit facetious, but really emphasizes the ways in which wealth inequalities uh, permeate the society that we live in today. So all of us are faced on a daily basis with evidence of how much the haves have versus the have nots have. Um, and it can be difficult living the way we do to picture different ways of doing things. But one of the things that archeology span is really phenomenal for is giving a sense of human social flexibility writ large across deep time, the, the hundreds of thousands of years of human prehistory we have uh, that we can access through studying material culture and the remains of ancient plants, animals, and humans. And so thinking through whether the kinds of inequalities we see today are uh, common, are inevitable, whether they've arisen in the past and people have come up with, with different ways of approaching them or sometimes staving them off is one of the reasons I wanted to teach this class. Could you tell us also, what do you expect students to take away from your class by the end of the semester? The, the thing I just said about uh, human social flexibility is something I really want students to come away with. I think it can be very difficult for us to picture um, societies that are organized differently than our own. It's one of the reasons that, that the genre science fiction is so popular because the only way that we can do that sometimes is by picturing societies on a different planet where, you know, um, thousands of years in the future. But what archaeology really gives us access to is the many different ways human groups have found to make a living. It can be really creative, innovative, different, uh, different than the way we live today. And I would like students to gain an appreciation for just how vast the kind of universe of possibilities um, is when it comes to things like different forms of food production systems or different ways of organizing a community, uh, electing leaders, organizing communally, organizing um, even you know, the space around you and how you live. So just an appreciation for human variability across space and time, which is kind of anthropology in a nutshell. Yeah. Could you say something about what students will actually be doing as they explore these, uh, these issues in your class? While this is a lecture-based class, I divided it into three units. And my anticipation is that for every unit, there's going to be uh, kind of a keystone activity. So students might have to collect data on material culture in their dorm rooms or uh, across Harvard campus or might have to um, participate in sort of behavioral activities about things like decision-making to think through some of the issues that are going to come up in this class. So while it is a lecture-based class, we're also going to be doing a lot of small group discussion, large group discussion, and then sometimes rather than being in the classroom, students are going to be out and about um, collecting data on material culture or human behavior in hopefully exciting ways. Could you give us maybe um, a particular example of one of these issues um, in some detail that uh, the students will be exploring? Um, not to be kind of solipsistic, but I always bring this stuff back to my own research because I work in a time period where we see really impressive evidence for architecture and communal investment of labor in you know, massive walls and fortifications and ditches, but we don't really see evidence for institutionalized inequalities in the form of elites. And so it becomes this kind of anthropological puzzle where we have some of these signatures where uh, you would anticipate uh, hierarchical forms of organization or an elite um, class emerging, but we don't see that at all. So it's, it's something of an enigma. And as a bioarchaeologist, as someone who studies human skeletal remains from archeological sites, I always think about uh, in, approaches to inequality that involve embodiment. So how do some of these things affect people's health, their height, um, their, their diets, and all of the associated sort of physiological processes that go along with that. Um, I think students will probably find some of the bioarchaeological readings and angles I'm going to be bringing in particularly interesting. 
one issue that's always of concern to Harvard College students is evaluation. So could you say something about how you're going to grade the students? What, what, what's the basis of the evaluation? Since this isn't a kind of rote learning based course, we're not going to be doing exams. Instead for every unit, I'm going to ask students to respond to a prompt in about a thousand to 1200 words that um, encourages them to synthesize some of the readings and activities and discussions we've had in class to really demonstrate that they're engaged with the material, that they're reading in detail, that they're thinking critically about these issues. So each of those are worth 15%. Engagement and participation is worth 20%. And then for the, the sort of final assignment in the class, students will have the opportunity to do an in-depth research project. This could be some aspect of inequality they've always been fascinated by or a particular time period or region. And we're going to kind of scaffold in um, a research proposal and then they will do a presentation that's worth, uh, I believe 5% of their grade. Uh, in the very last week of class. So they'll get to share their research um, with their peers in the class as well. But it's an opportunity if they're excited by archeology, span interested in it, to, to kind of um, come up with their own track for, for asking particular questions about the past. Right. Thank you, Dr. Beck. So you've been hearing about Anthropology 1033, the Archeology span of Inequality. Check it out this fall. We hope to see you on campus.